Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Anime on Draft, episode 37. Once again, as always, I am joined here with my two co-hosts, Drew. Hello. And uh, Rolando. Hello, but who are you? Yeah, who are Me? you? Oh, yeah. my name is Alec. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm Alec. Who is this? <laughs> who is this? I'm just a guy. I'm just the mystery host for this oh, week. Oh, shit. With a familiar voice, that's oh, all. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> every week, I think I... Or every time I host, I think I forget something in the inter- introductions. Either it's me saying my name and then forgetting about both of you and just going straight into stuff, or just... Or now forgetting my own name, but... uh. So well, you're not today, forgetting your name. What? Well, you're just forgetting. I'm forgetting to say, to say my name. Yeah. What's my name again? <clears throat> Blink um, 182. Um. But it's not what's my it's name. Not, again. Um, it's not. What's my age? My again. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, today we've got. Um. We still haven't really decided what we're gonna talk about <laughs> this season because it's kind of random. Um. Hopefully, we'll get that ironed out soon. So today we're gonna have kind of a mishmash of shows that different people have watched. Some sharing some not um and then we'll go from there but uh let's start today with our weekly pairing which is just the beer um and so we have <laughs> i'm gonna say it two ways one is the correct way it's uh unibrew a tout le monde make it death <laughs> and then there's the correct way which is unibrow a tout le monde mega death saison um so this is a beer from the brewery Unibrew, based out of Canada. And uh, Rolando, you picked this one, so French Canada. why don't you uh, give us a little insight onto why? Um, I figured we needed some sort of redemption on Saison's. And so this one looked interesting. I haven't had it, but I do like <clears throat> um, La Fond du Monde from the same brewery. So... Uh, that's basically why. Very cool. I've been wanting to try, is it the one you just mentioned? The, the La Fondemont. end of the world? Yeah. L-A-F-I-N-D-U-M-O-N-D-E. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been wanting to, uh, try that one actually recently. So, it'll, you know, hopefully this one's good too. Um, but how about we go into our first tasterinos of this bad boy and, uh, get our first impressions my head dissipated. Ooh, that's got a nice smell. Mine is still there. It does smell nice. It I has think, a nice color. I think, guys, I'm just not a Saison person because I think this tastes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Wait, is no. way better. This is way better than that uh, it's, Saison Dupont. It's like it's 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 not awful, but it's just I don't know. I just don't like the flavor profile. Why specifically? What don't you like about it? It has a terrible, to me, it has a terrible mouthfeel. It has like this bitter lingering taste after you swallow. And it's just like unpleasant. I, I think it smells fine. Like It smells really good. It smells fine. It smells like fruity, coriander-y. Um, but it's it's when you drink it and then you get like the the like taste in like the back of your like side of your mouth and it's like bitter and it just lingers there and it just lingers there for a long time and, I, and I'm not a, I'm not a fan. <laughs> so you don't like the mouthfeel? Mm-mm. Or it's the taste? Just fizzy. I don't like the mouthfeel or the taste. To me, it's like, and I I think I said this about the last day song too. It's like it it tastes like the beer is spoiled. <laughs> like didn't i say that about the last one and that's what the, that's what this one tastes like too maybe you just keep getting bad beers <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't think he, i don't think he's getting bad beers i just don't think that he likes the taste yeah I, his taste buds I, i'm, are not, a, up I'm not a saison person i don't know it just it tastes it tastes spoils to me. too barnyardy for you dude yeah and i like sours and i and i like but like this is like in between like a sour and like 
a pilsner or something like that. And I and I don't I don't like it. I I want it to either be one or the other. Well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> there's a reason why they call these farmhouse ales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's because they're barnyardy, that barnyardy mm-hmm. taste that you don't like. Yeah, I, and me, it's either good barnyard or bad barnyard. Well, I mean, just just <laughs> give me like if you're gonna do like a crazy like bad flavor, like give me a bitter IPA. That's that's more my speed. Uh, so you're this, saying you're saying that bitter IPAs are bad flavor. Well, I mean, a lot of people don't like them. I can see people liking saisons. Um, more than they like IPAs. It's it, I would it, it's definitely disagree. Mm. I think more people like IPAs than Saisons. I would agree as well. I mean, I mean you're you, you're a perfect example of this. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you take if you take like if you take a person who doesn't like beer that much and you give them this and then you give them an IPA, I think they would gravitate more towards this because it's less bitter and it's easier to drink. But I can I can see where you're coming from saying like for me it's like it, the bar. I think it would depend on the IPA because yeah. if you give them the mission, yeah, of course they're gonna take this over that because that's <laughs> like telling them to eat a hop a piece of hops. Yeah. <clears throat> if um, you gave them something if you take different, them, different, yeah, IPA something wise. lighter or, or like a, more of a beginner, you it's it's the same thing. Something. You're not gonna give them. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna tell somebody to you know try a fucking. Um, fuck what's it called like a sour and give them the most barnyardy soury of all sours yeah, but and I, give them I like something sours a but i don't like this yeah well different flavor profile but like i, I think <laughs> it's it, i think it's for me it's like it's in between it's it's not it's not like a, a golden ale or a pilsner or something like that and it's not <clears> a sour and it's in between and it doesn't translate well for me like i want it to be one way or the other and having it caught in the middle just it just doesn't taste good. I don't know. <laughs> well, let's hear from one of the people who I think enjoys it. Uh, Rolando, what do you think about it? Um, I mean, it's it's got, you know, the typical Belgian spice profile. And then it's got that kind of tang to it that Saison's have in general. And I, I like mm-hmm. it. I mean, the Saison DuPont was not really my cup of tea just because it seemed like an odd, you know, flavor profile. But this one for me, this one speaks to me a bit more. Mm-hmm. I do like the the smell. It's very, I don't know how to describe it, like malty, I guess. Um, weedy is the, yeah. maybe <clears throat> the, the smell. Yeah, I'd say weedy. And then the... It's just got like or grainy that kind of tang that kind of makes it a bit refreshing. It's like lemony. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very carbonated. Very yeah. very lively mouthfeel. Um I really like the carbonation in it. It's like drinking a soda kinda. But not that fizzy. Not nearly that fizzy. I like the golden color. Yeah, it's a good color as well. The head is like a stark white, almost. No, actually, well, it's dark in my room, so it's white tan, I guess. But yeah, mine was pretty white. Smells fruity. What hits you in the front is kind of that grainy. For me, it's like grainy, like I don't want to call it grassy, but grassy. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, and and like. And citrusy, not really orange peel citrus like you would expect in something like an IPA. More like to me, it's more like a lemon citrus. It's more of that sharp, sharp citrus. <clears throat> well, I have the box for this in front of me. It was kind of like a nice little story about how this beer came about. And so go for it. Um, a two lemon ale is a refreshing an artisanal Belgian style dry hopped saison and honors the mutual passions and friendship of Megadeth's Dave Mustaine and Unibrew's brewmaster, Jerry Vietz. Um, inspired by the most popular metal song to feature a chorus sung entirely in French, the idea of a Megadeth beer brewed by Unibrew 
came about when Dave and Jerry's paths crossed while the band was in Quebec City for a show. It is brewed as a tribute to all the friends of heavy metal music and Belgian style ales, and the label appropriately prompt appropriately and prominently features a symbol that is synonymous to Megadeth, their well-known mascot, Vic Rattlehead. Vic Rattlehead. So, in terms of uh, beers that are made in collaboration with metal bands, um, I think that this one is better than The Trooper. The one with... um, The Iron Iron Maiden. Maiden. Iron Maiden. Um, I don't really remember that one very well, so I can't really uh, speak to that. I remember right. I thought it was meh. It was just a you know English style ale, right? I probably would have liked it better than this, though. I don't like this very much. <laughs> you clearly don't like it at all. Yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> um, so no more, um, no more saison. Get the get that. Get him out of here. Yeah. Well, you make me drink IPAs, so you can drink saisons. Yeah, but you're coming Suck around to those just like Suck I'm coming around to uh, stout. So yeah, well, well you'll come, you around come around to saisons next. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, with that, how about we move into our uh, our ratings of this? We'll uh, I'll start with uh, Rolando, and we'll go to the bomb drop after. Okay. <laughs> um, it's good. It's uh, kind of fairly simple but um i like the flavor profile it definitely is to me better than the saison dupont even though i know a lot of people like that one and it's a pretty popular import but um i'm gonna say this one's a four for me that's a pretty good rating i would say um drew let's hear it you guys are gonna like (laughs) you aren't gonna like my rating um, what a one, one point uh, seven five. Oh I, God! I just I don't know. I don't I don't I don't like it. It's just it, I I'll drink it. Like it's it's not hard to drink, but like that bitter flavor that you get, the in between of like what I talked about before, like between a pilsner and like a sour. It's just, I don't I don't know. I don't. I'm not about it. Not not my not my cup of tea. Okay. Or your cup of well, beer. Cup or of your beer. cup of beer. You, yeah. you better finish it, though. Don't waste good beer. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to finish it. But... <laughs> Although I can't talk because I never finished the mission. I finished my cup. <laughs> that, was lot, that was a lot That was a lot more, though. That, like, that was yeah. like, almost like two pints. It was a, it well, was he a had 32 the ounce. Yeah. That I, I had to get the tall fat can because that's all, it's so, all I could find. It was 32 ounces of yeah. that fucking a lot. shit. God, I tried. I I drank sixteen whole ounces. Okay, I tried. <laughs> I got. I picked it up the other day and I drank. And I'm like, this is so good. Like, <laughs> this is so good. I actually like that God. beer. That beer is tight. That beer is so good. I can't good. do it. <clears throat> I can't do it. It overpowered every flavor. <laughs> taste you should, bud you for should me, come and I couldn't back now it. that you've drank a bunch of IPAs <laughs> and like try it again. I'll pass. I'll, I'll wait a little <laughs> while longer. I'll wait till my taste buds are where they were when I like ended college with IPAs and could drink them. <laughs> um, so for me, I I am going to agree with Rolando. It's a very good beer. I'm going to disagree with Rolando and say I liked the Saison DuPont a little better, um, but I think it still deserves a good rating. I honestly don't remember what I gave the Saison DuPont, so I could end up rating this higher or lower. Who the fuck knows? But um, I do think it deserves a 3.75. Uh, so that's kind of I think where gave, I'm going to slap this bad boy at. I think you gave the DuPont a four. A four. So we flip-flopped? Yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> I gave it a, a three, I think. Oh, damn. Um, Flip-flop. I liked the... I don't know. I, I just liked the other one's flavor profile a little. Um, this one is nice, though. It's really simple as far as they go. At least it tastes simple to me. Um, and it's not awful. So if you like Saisons, definitely try it out. Unless you're me. Um, don't. Unless don't. you're Drew. Uh, some people just don't like it because their taste buds are broken. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> with that, <laughs> with oh, that let's, let's go ahead and move on to our large happy hour. We have a handful of stuff to talk about. Um, I'll just throw it off to you, Rolando, first. This is, I think, the only show that any of us have both watched, so let's get that one out of the way. Um, Violet Evergarden, 
So this one is, um, it is not simulcasting on Netflix. No. So you've just got to kind of find it. Um, yes. good luck. But, the high uh, seas. yeah, the high seas, <laughs> uh, Rolando, you watched the first episode. what do you think of it so far? Um, it's good. Um, just to elaborate on what you just said, it is simulcast in Japan on Netflix and outside of Japan, we won't get it until probably it all airs. So that's kind of shitty. Um, but the binge watchers, yeah, it's good for binge watchers if you want to watch it way later. But, um, <laughs> I like the first episode. Um, it's actually, uh, I would say one of the, probably, it's probably the best premiere I've seen so far this season, just in terms of, um, I mean, obviously the art is beautiful. It's Kyoto animation. And then I do like the characters and the kind of unique dynamic that is happening with Violet because she's she's just an interesting character that I know we've seen this type of character before, but I'm interested to see how they implement her character into um, a setup like this that isn't, um, what's that, elfin lead or whatever. So it's it looks good to me so far. And the it's also just like the type of show I like watching. This is like a very uh, post like, some war post. It's like <laughs> it's either post war during war, like historical type of yeah. thing, European uh, history type deal. This is clearly like some sort of like Germanish um, Europe, like European town and all that stuff. So it looks good. The. The pacing of the first episode was good. Uh, uh, yeah, overall, I, I enjoyed it. And I'm going to continue watching. Ah, sorry. What? <laughs> Something flew into my face and I was <laughs> trying to Ew. get it out of the way. <laughs> Ew. Like, go away. And so so I'm sitting here trying to respond and I'm just like distracted. Ew. Um, I, I, I actually, so you said the other day, you mentioned that you watched Violet Evergarden and then you said, I like it, but it's also the type of show that I would just watch immediately after you said that. I was like, oh, so it's post-war something, something <laughs> like, it's yeah, just, kind of like I was, I that other of, one like, there. I forgot what one? it was. The one. Well, there was the one with the witch. Chick. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Um, I forget that one. And then there's the um, princess principal princess principal. There's the um, the God. What is it? The shoot. I can't remember the name of it, but there's another one. Um, anyway, so I, I was like, okay, so I know what it is, but, uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I definitely think that the characters are interesting. Violet is interesting and how they're going to kind of put her into this setting <clears throat> is going to be interesting. Um, I also thought that they did just a really good job of kind of catching the viewer, um, with the story and obviously, the scenery is really nice, but something that I noticed too is the score for the anime was really good as well, mm -hmm. especially at the very beginning when they were looking at, at that emerald, the way they kind of like built up the moment and all that. Like they did that throughout the whole first episode to me and it, it just fit really well. Um, and they had good pacing as well. It didn't feel slow. It didn't feel rushed or anything. It's, so, it's um, weird though, yeah. right? Because this is Kyoto animation. And then I know you and I both watched, um, a silent voice, mm -hmm. which was also Kyoto animation. Yeah. Sorry, Kyoto. Um, and, uh, it's just that like, we'll talk <laughs> about that difference. in a shot, but it's drastically yeah. different how mm -hmm. I feel poorly done that movie is compared to how well <clears throat> done this first episode, first is. episode is. And I feel like mm -hmm. it's a type of you know, director. being able to direct, I don't know. I don't think it's, it's probably not the same director, but probably not. Um, it's, it's different directing a half hour program versus a full feature length in which Koi mm -hmm. no Kitachi was two full hours. So it's 120 yeah. minutes. That's pretty long. Yeah. It was a uh, 129. 
I know because I was looking at it. I was like, yeah. geez, this is two hours and nine minutes. But if um, they had a full season to do that, they probably would have done better. It would have done a lot better. But we'll talk about that at a later time. Um, uh, for now, uh, I'm definitely going to continue watching it. You'll continue watching it. So expect to hear about that from us going forward. Uh, the other show I'm watching right now, which I still suggest everyone watches, is March Comes In Like a Lion or what is it? called in chat i don't know what it's called in uh, sun got to know lion yeah if you're watching on crunchyroll march comes in like a lion is what they called it because i caught up on the entire i guess this is a continuation from last season and i caught up at the end of last season on all of it and i've been watching the new stuff it's really good that's a shaft show um, right mm-hmm, yes that's a shaft show it's about a kid who is a professional shogi uh, player because of lots and lots of reasons and it kind of deals with um a lot of <laughs> really dark themes um Very. and his own kind of almost crippling depression and just this family that befriends him yeah, is like kind sh- of a show that Shudo Shaft, uh, Shudo Shaft, uh, <laughs> likes to do Shudo, Shudo Shudo Shaft, Shudo 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 Shudo. are you sure you didn't drink all of this beer already like, <laughs> he I, loves it i, I just finished, chugged it. i finished the beer but i'm like i'm so tired <laughs> um, i'm so, so tired guys <laughs> it's definitely a really good show um i i suggest you got like Rolando, you catch up whenever you can, if you can. Andrew, if you got time, I would suggest it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it for that for me. Um, I'll go ahead and throw it over to you, Drew, actually, because you you watched, you've been watching Hakata Tonkotsu Ramens, right? Yeah, so it just How's came out, uh, premiered this week. Um, it's super interesting, and it reminded me a lot of the pacing and style of Dararararara. Um, I don't know if I said that right. And then, so I looked it up and actually they are, I believe they're done by the same author and there's even a crossover book between the two shows. Um, so I, I found that out, which was interesting. I think the same animation studio does both of them. Um, but it's a show basically about hitmen and a hitman or like hitmen are, I guess, an appropriate, um, job in this version of Japan um you get like this cross-dresser hitman and you get like this detective sort of noir hitman and then you get like this lady hitman who's like protecting the mayor who's like super corrupt and his son like murders people um and so you get the perspective of all these different like hitmen and hitmen groups and um they kind of all tie into each other um even though none of them have actually met and so it's I have you seen Gerard um, Rolando? No. Um, so basically it's there's a there's a bunch of different players or a bunch of different characters and all their stories intermingle and intertwine, but the show is kind of sporadic and the pacing is kind of sporadic where it'll show you a random scene of one group and then it will jump to another random scene for another group. And then by the end of the season, everything kind of gets tied together and everything makes sense. Um, and so that's what the first episode reminded me of. And so I looked it up and like I said, um, and this are, um, by, I believe the same author and the same animation studio. So it makes sense. Um, it was a good first episode. It's interesting. Um, it's a lot of people killing people and detective work and, um, we'll see kind of where it goes. I kind of, I watched Gerara Ra Ra, um, for a while, but then I ended up dropping it because it became too sporadic and too hard to keep up with everything. Uh, it just wasn't worth the effort. Um, but we'll see if this holds my interest or not so far. It has very cool. Um, I was actually thinking of watching that one as well. Uh, it looked interesting. So, just, just shot, be prepared but. for weird, strange pacing and for the story to jump back and forth and back to and forth. different characters. So just be aware of that before you go into it. For sure. Um, on our next show that uh, Rolando watched, I don't really know how to pronounce it. So uh, go ahead, Rolando. <laughs> oh, are you talking about, about? Mershin Machin? Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's the little dots. I don't know how you pronounce things with the little dots. So uh, it's like a yeah. sh- it's like a short, eh, 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 eh. 
It's like Other it's languages. exactly that sound that Drew makes when he is uh, choking. Um, so um, this it's it's the first episode of this show starts off with this kind of uh, socially awkward girl that just reads a lot. She has she calls it like some sort of syndrome where she just reads like impul- mm-hmm. impulsively because she can't deal with like interacting Society. with other people so she doesn't ha- she literally has zero friends um what you would call a loner and then she kind of discovers this book in her bag that she can't open and then sees this kind of in like this <clears throat> chick running that is wearing like this invisibility cloak kind of like you know Harry Potter ish and then she follows her ends up at this library and then ends up in a different world um where like magic exists and then basically actually the more i talk about it it kind of sounds like harry potter um (laughs) (laughs) a little bit (laughs) basically where it ends is like essentially the book she has is called an original and it's she gets like you people who are chosen by their tomes kind of like in black clover um i guess become magicians mages witches i don't know what they're gonna call them but magic people yeah so that's where it kind of ended it's kind of more on like the comedy um side from what i got in the first episode but there's gonna it looks like gonna be battles and stuff so i'm gonna give it the three episode rule it's interesting enough to give the three episode rule, but I'm not sure if I'm going to watch the whole thing. Cool. Uh, well, let us know if it's <laughs> worth watching uh, and then maybe I'll give it a shot to Reno because I did like Harry Potter. So <laughs> um, the next one we got here on tap is uh, the Brio's work is never done. Drew, I think you're the only one who's watched that so far. I think I was planning to watch it, you but I watched you and I watched the first episode. Um, last thursday of the rio's work is never done it's yeah. the shogi the shogi one the other shogi one. Oh, i didn't watch that one i was going to no, i you, didn't actually we watched it when you were at my place we did yes while we were eating dinner there was probably like a little girl and she runs away from oh home. yeah 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 i was like trying to think uh was this before or after moving the couch <laughs> it was definitely after <laughs> yeah <it> was, uh, <laughs> all i really remember is moving the godforsaken couch but um okay yeah no i remember we did all watch that one okay so uh but uh go ahead drew um what'd you what'd you think of that one so far yeah the second episode's out um it's more <clears throat> of the same it's um this 16 year old mentoring this nine-year-old to play shogi um He kind of has a revelation in the second episode where he's like, I don't have to live up to the standards of the title. I can just play how I want to play and play to win. Um, So that was good. He had some hijinks, uh, which I won't spoil for you guys. You guys should watch it because it's pretty funny. Um, And then, um, yeah, we have the first major conflict uh, coming in in this episode as well. So I won't spoil that for you guys. Um, I recommend it's a cool, lighthearted show. Um, it doesn't really explain the rules of shogi or anything. So if people are going into that expecting to kind of learn how to play, um, I would look elsewhere. But it's just a lighthearted, um, fun little show that you can kind of turn your brain off and just watch because it's enjoyable. There's comedy. Um, there's good like shonen moments when they're playing uh, shogi, and so it's it, it's interesting. I'll definitely uh, watch it throughout the season. Uh, right on. I, I agree. It's really funny from what we saw the older or older, younger sister. Yeah. The the, is hilarious. Um, yeah. When she keeps beating on him, she, she, she makes, she makes another appearance in the second episode and it's, it's really good. So (laughs) just the, the also, um, 
Rolando when we were watching it, the little girl's dead eyes. Oh, when, yeah. When the sister's at the door and she's like, is that a girl at your door? And she's like, who is it, sensei? <laughs> Her yeah. eyes are just like, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> and that's how and that's how I knew that Drew liked this show. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, remember, though, when we were talking about a while ago, uh, Rainai Bokun, how they kind of like overplayed the stereotypes and like the jokes got old. I can mm-hmm. see this show doing that, though, because in the second episode, even it was a lot of kind of the same kind of comedy so i'm hoping they switch it up because i can see it getting old but at least it's more interesting than reinai bokun because there is like some sort of semblance of a composed story so you know hopefully uh hopefully they kind of switch it up but we'll, we'll yeah when's the tournament arc yeah they're probably you know <laughs> 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 yeah, I, uh, I definitely hope it's better than Renai Bokun because I dropped that and I didn't finish it because mm-hmm. I thought it was bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you, so, you're sick of the fucking Yandere chick just stabbing people like every episode? Like, what's wrong just with scre- you? Just going, <laughs> and then stabbing someone, and then going, <laughs> and stabbing someone, yeah. and then the other girl just being an idiot yeah. <laughs> and yep. causing yep. the same problems over yep. and over. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'll yeah. continue watching this one. You're going to probably continue as well Rolando yeah um if it you know becomes like Renai Bokun then I'm probably gonna drop it but it's been funny so far Mm -hmm. we may have the first show that we uh possibly may watch the whole season guys wow good job as a group um so next show uh Rolando you watch Citrus yes how was that one it was very eerie Oh, okay. Um, so just much. Look at just look at the cover art or the promotion <laughs> art for it. <laughs> you so, kind of understand. <laughs> so so much so that um, I was very surprised at the there's like near the end of the episode. The so there's the two main girls on the you know the <clears throat> promotional art, and one of them essentially just mouth rapes the other one. Like nice. Yeah forcefully nice. forcefully sticking her tongue down the other one's throat so yeah. i was like well this is weird <laughs> so i don't i'm not i'm not sure if i'm gonna like i'll probably you know watch the second episode and then if it doesn't seem like just a weird money grab type thing where <laughs> they're just gonna have two chicks making out then i'll continue if it like seems like it'll be interesting but so far after the first episode, I was like, and this got weird. So Is it as bad as uh, Sakura Trick was? Did you see that? Um, it's so Sakura Trick, I can tell when they were going to kiss because uh-huh. that that's more, you know, like light and fluffy type deal. Yeah. This one was just like super aggressive and like. <laughs> <laughs> kind of malicious in a sense so i i was i felt really uncomfortable i want to eat your tonsils <laughs> it, nice. it wasn't even like that it was just like uh it was just weird <laughs> yeah, I so uh, if you like weird stuff go ahead and watch like aggress- aggressive yuri yeah <laughs> aggressive yuri <laughs> <laughs> budget megumin and aggressive yuri oh, shit. Uh, for Rolando, the next one up is uh, Death March to the Parallel World. And okay. you watched that yes, one as well. I did. So if you are familiar with um, In Another World with My Smartphone, Sword Art Online, uh, you just any of those, I got, you know, re-zero, just teleported to another world um, mm-hmm. and this kind of thing. Uh, this one, the premise is... Uh, this guy is a programmer for video games. Why are they always programmers? I don't know. But he was working on fixing bugs on this MMO game. And every, it's like their <clears throat> death march or whatever. I don't know if this is a real term because I'm not a programmer. But um, he called it a death march where all the programmers are there trying to you know, fix bugs and get stuff um, shipped out so everyone is like asleep after essentially staying at the company for like a week essentially like just programming and uh, then Fixing shit. he goes to sleep and wakes up in the world of the game he was debugging and um, 
kind of has to figure out how to not die. And then it's that premise. So it's kind of like, you know, a log horizon sword art online type of deal where now he's in this world, but it's also similar to, um, in another world with my smartphone ish where he's kind of overpowered. Well, I mean, you know, Kirito was overpowered. Um, God, but, yes, he was fucking yeah. overpowered. Holy shit. But to me, it seems like it's going to be a little bit more like gate. Mm. So okay. that's where I'm interested in seeing where the show goes. It's not going to yeah, be like re zero where like it's super, um, underpowered. No, where, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be like ReZero where he's super underpowered, but it ends Useless. up, you know, taking like a darker turn. But like to me, it seems like it's going to be more like Gate in terms of like the the way they interact with the characters. And but not necessarily like being super political and like technical like Gate is. So, yeah. <clears throat> Very cool. Gate, Gate was pretty serious. So, yeah, it was like a more I like serious Gate. anime. Yeah. Gate was dope. But, Good character um, design. Mm-hmm. Um, we got just a couple more shows to go over. Um, so I'll just... The the last one I watched... Well, actually, it's not the last one, but the next one I watched was A Place Further Than the Universe... The un- Place Further Than the Universe or Sora Yori... Antarctica Mo- Girls. Shoroi Basho. Yes, Antarctica Girls. Don't Episode 2. We have that. more of the same. Um, they're... Saving up to go to Antarctica. Yeah, There's some hijinks. And she's trying to get into the group by seducing a guy. Um, oh but we also have the introduction of a third, third, uh, yeah, third, <laughs> no, a third, a third, third girl. Yuri, so now there's Yuri three girls song. trying to go to Antarctica. <clears throat> and, Give up uh, on that dream. This ladies. girl like, didn't else. go to high school and she already graduated. Because she just took the test and graduated, or some shit like that, and uh, and so we've got two in the same high school, and one who works at a convenience store, and they're all trying to go to Antarctica, and it's actually an enjoyable show to watch. No, so no, it's- watch it. Drew's just <laughs> retarded. <laughs> um. So, um. Anyways, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> Next show we've got is um, the last one that on that the list. <laughs> Yeah, and I refuse to watch Monogatari, so we're set. There yeah. we go. <laughs> At least I'm missing out on a truly awful show, Ooh. and I don't mind. <laughs> so, la- exactly, that was the point. <laughs> um, so, Rolando, the last show you watched was uh, Dagashikashi Season 2? Yes. Is that how you say it? Yes. It's a play on <laughs> words. It's a play on Dagashi, which is... Um, like snacks, and then there's also like <clears throat> the phrase in Japanese "daga shikashi," which is like, you know, but and like you know, kind of like that. Um, and so, um, this one is more of your comedic, uh, slice of life type show. It's mainly about snacks and stuff, so there's not really much to say about it other than <laughs> the second season is now moving to the 12 minute format. So what? I was surprised by that. Um, I was like really confused at why what? I started hearing the ending theme song, and I was like, I feel like this episode hasn't gone on long enough. And I looked, I'm like, oh fuck, it's only like 12 minutes long. So. It's still funny. Um, I'm going to keep watching it. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Um, like I said, I watched a couple other shows. Um, I watched Slow Start episodes one and two. Oh, I only Slow saw Start, the first of that one. It's kind of slice of life isn't it? Yeah. Um, I actually liked the first and second episode. Um, it's super easy to watch. Uh, just kind of random and funny at times. Um, and then I also have been watching Black Clover. That one is kind of more of the same. It's just action. Um, the guy keeps yelling, but not as much as he did in the first season. Um, and, but otherwise, the action's good. And 
So yeah. Uh, other than that, well, and we we've, we've all watched Magister's Magus's Bride or whatever. Ancient Magus Bride. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm caught up now, and the show's awesome. But uh, Alec, you said you guys are gonna keep it to like the shots format. Yeah, we yeah. want to try and keep it to the shots format. So we'll come up with when we're gonna record the next one, and we pro- So since you're caught up. We should do like a, like a, what you thought of it episode. You should shot. listen listen to the ones we did now that you're caught up. Yeah, and see what we talked about, and then we can kind of get your perspective on different stuff in a Drew review sort of episode, and then we can go from there. I think for for the shots and uh, cool. and we'll plan that out. Um, and so keep keep a lookout for those guys. Uh, the uh, Magus Bride shots, they'll keep coming. Um, and thanks, everyone, for listening to those. We really appreciate it. We're glad you enjoy them. Um, other news, Drew, you uh, wanted to talk about Dragon Ball Z, Fighter Z. Yeah, just, um, well, it, it's not out yet, but it's coming out. I think it's like the 20-something. Mm. It comes out 28th. I want to say, I don't know, comes out soon. Um, they just had a beta and it was a huge flop because, uh, our <laughs> systems couldn't get their servers off the ground. Uh, so they're doing another small beta, um, before <laughs> it's released. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it, it looks cool. It's, it's staying pretty true to, uh, the anime, uh, which I think is really cool. Um, there was a clip that somebody posted online of, um, what happens in the game is uh, Frieza kills uh, Krillin and Goku then goes Super Saiyan and then you fight uh, Frieza's team in the game or whatever. And if you kill all of his teammates, um, one of them by doing a, uh, a super, it turns like Namek into like the fiery, explodey planet. And then you kill the rest of his teammates and then you kill Frieza as Goku. You then get like a cinematic finish where um, you see Frieza, like, try to shoot at Goku after he's already been defeated, and then Goku, like, blowing him up just like he did in the show. So there's a lot of cool, like, little cinematic spoilers. Um, so if you guys are big Dragon Ball Z fans out there, definitely uh, recommend checking that game out. Um, it seems pretty faithful to uh, the anime, and there's a lot of spoil or not spoilers, but a lot of, like, Easter eggs and uh, information. Throwbacks. And throwbacks cool. to, to the show, so... Super yes, cool. spoilers if you don't know. If, if, if you haven't watched Dragon Ball Z, yes, <laughs> there's, there's going to be spoilers, but that that's just been out for But if you're playing years. Dragon Ball Fighter Z and you haven't seen the show, you're probably not a very big fan yeah, of Dragon yeah, Ball Z. Yeah. So, um, that's nice. Though. That looks cool. Looks interesting. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it'll be a cool game. We'll see with, like, I know people are getting butthurt over DLC and the amount of characters <laughs> that are going to be with the base game and what you have to pay for. Uh, so oh, that's we'll always yeah, every that's, Arxis I mean, that's, game. Uh, it, it, exactly, every every type of game like that, especially one with a fan base as big as Dragon Ball Z. Like they're gonna make you pay for the cool characters, or at least oh, costumes yeah. and, and things of that nature. So yeah, and different like people based off of movies from the show. Yeah, I can't anyway, wait. Oh, do you want this guy from this movie? We'll pay for it. Mm. It's like. Yeah. I can't wait for all the Marvel people to shill out for this game. <laughs> oh, for sure. Because Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is already dead in the scene, so people are just waiting for this. Very cool. Very cool. You know, I don't like fighting games, but I actually owned three of the Dragon Ball Z fighting games, and I actually liked those. <laughs> I was awful at them. But this one's supposed were... to be pretty accessible and has like a good tutorial, <clears throat> so we'll see see how it goes. I hope. I, I still swear to God, I hope less. there's no fucking auto combo in this game. There is auto combos. Oh, you can turn God. it off. They keep though. they keep t- like putting that in. Yeah. Like I know they're trying to make these games more accessible, but like I'm tired. To people of, like me who don't want to learn the combo. I'm tired <laughs> of just like seeing like just the same freaking same auto combo string that just keeps getting mashed and no one's learning how to do anything. Well, Perfect. that's what that's what people have uh, complained about because they want this game to be competitive. But I guess there's a way to change it or not do it or turn it off or something. So, um, yeah, so that's maybe different in competitive, than competitive. They'll turn it off. That's different than Persona 4 Arena, where like parts of the like the first parts of the auto combos were actually part of actual combo strings. Yeah. So. 
we'll cool, see. cool. Should be we'll fun. see how it turns out. Should be fun. I don't know if you guys are gonna get it. Maybe I'll buy it. I've already, already, I've already bought it. So oh, well, pre- I'm, I'm I have sure it. Maybe I'll buy it, and then maybe we can all play, and we'll talk about it if it's good or not, yeah, and how bad I am. PS4, <laughs> PS4, PS4. Yeah, that's where I would get it. Um, but other than that, are there any other shows that you guys are planning to continue watching but haven't watched the next episodes of? That we didn't mention about before. We were talking about that other show, that ramen show, not the one that I watched with the hitmen, but the other ramen show. Um, oh yeah, I Boy watched. Me I watched seven. the I watched the first episode of it. And I was extremely bored, so I'm not gonna watch it anymore. <laughs> Is that the slice of lifey? Yeah, ramen. Yeah, where she yeah. talks about ramen or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan. It was boring. Any on for you, Rolando? Um, let me think. There's that show. Um, what else is there? Uh, let me just look at my my Crunchyroll queue. <clears throat> I'm gonna watch the second episode of the Rio's work is never done. Um, I'm gonna watch episode two of Yuru Camp. And then I'll see the second episode of Slow Start since you said you like it. Um, I liked it. In terms of Slice of Life, um, I kind of half watched the first episode of that one because um, I was on Discord with you and I forgot <laughs> we, were, we were talking about something and it was kind of just playing in the background. But I do like Eurocamp's um, style a bit more. So right, we'll see. I was going to watch the first episode of Eurocamp, but I just haven't yet. Um, what I was thinking we might want to do since we don't really have many shows that we're all watching is either like each cat, like slowly catch up on something through the season or we pick an old anime and we watch that instead. Um, or we just have throwbacks each week that we talk about something like that. Cause otherwise we're not going to run out of to, content. We're going to run out of content and we're going to just have to review eight shows each week and that's going to be really boring for yeah. all of us because I don't like I don't mind your guys's opinions but if I'm not watching the show I have nothing to contribute so yeah. it's kind of like why am I sitting here just talking about something so we'll we'll figure out some like interesting ways to spice it up for us and you the listeners um so keep a lookout for maybe some interesting content coming to you here at the uh, main podcast since this just, just season's like, pretty slow. You guys got to like hold on for spring season because <clears throat> spring season is going to be ridiculous. There's going to be so many good shows like and so many shows that we're all looking forward to. So got to mm-hmm. gotta weather the storm of uh, winter <laughs> 2018 and uh, get into spring. So we'll figure winter it out. This- you mean everyone's excited for the <clears throat> one year anniversary of Anime on Draft? Yeah. Ooh. That's, That's true. Meant. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah. Good thing it happens in spring, right? Where's, where's yeah. Konosuba? I want more Konosuba. Yeah, right? Could you imagine if that were in oh, spring God, too? Oh, God, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> this spring would be like, what do I do with my Lit, life? Like, can dude. I just there'd be nothing. take there, there'd be two no months time off? And, yeah. <laughs> can I take two months we, off and just watch anime? That's Konosuba. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, with that... Um, as always, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, if you want to check us out, uh, go to head to our WordPress. It's a little behind on being updated with the different <laughs> with the different episodes. Um, but if you go to our SoundCloud and iTunes, it's always up there first. Gets to YouTube after that, and then once the YouTube's done, it'll be up on the WordPress. Um, check us out on Twitter for any updates about anything. The WordPress is anime on draft.wordpress.com Twitter anime on draft at anime on draft. And then YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, you can just search anime on draft and you'll find us. So uh, with that, um, any last uh, notes you guys? No, look out for that. A silent voice shot. Yeah. Yeah. We might get, uh, Mark on that one because he's gonna watch the movie, and he's so the one that introduced the manga. Oh, speaking the of uh, speaking of that movie too, oh. they're uh, applying for Oscar nomination or Oscar consideration. So apparently, it's okay hand emoji for a silent that- voice. Yeah. Oh god. Why? I don't think it won't win. That's, that's what, not gonna. That's that's what 
that's what I read. So I would like to see what some. I would like to see what you think about it, Drew, because you haven't read the manga and uh, get someone's opinion. Uh, yeah, of someone I, who hasn't I definitely read the manga. Would actually be interesting because after it. reading it, I was like, "This is not good." <laughs> um, but you'll hear I've more seen, about I've that. Seen in the cli- I've seen clips of the show or like clips of people posting and the girls like doing sign language and stuff. I'm like, this seems really boring and dumb. It's not boring <laughs> and dumb, but I I do feel like knowing the story um the pacing was off it it just to me it things. feels like it detracts from a lot of it and there are mm-hmm. a lot of scenes that i felt were supposed to be impactful because they were when you read it mm-hmm. didn't have that same impact and if it mm-hmm. really was impactful it would you would still feel it knowing even knowing yeah. what's going to happen but keep a lookout for that on the shot <laughs> yeah. for more for more about that from uh myself rolando and mark um and then and then maybe drew a watch it and we'll get the non-readers opinion i, I don't really want to watch it it doesn't sound that good <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to you the story but, <laughs> if you yeah. read it it's good i'm not gonna read yeah. it i can't read the story is good. oh that's yeah true. i forgot you can't read so. i i but. literally cannot read well on that <laughs> note, <laughs> so you can't read. Right. And that's us here at Anime on Draft. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Help me. Good night. Help me. 